All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I installed a custom entertainment system in my 2010 Honda Ridgeline. So I just wrapped up the install. I thought I would go over it and talk about exactly how I did it. All right, so I started off by wanting an aftermarket stereo. My factory OEM stereo, this is an uh, RTS, by the way, had a bad backlight. It never really sounded that great being a factory radio, but the backlight wasn't working, so it gave me an excuse to start on this project sooner than later. Um, the factory RTS came with a subwoofer, just like the RTL in the back. Uh, the factory subwoofer is not very good. So I first set out to retain the factory subwoofer, and I installed a Sony uh, XAV AX5000, which is kind of a popular choice uh, for this vehicle. And basically, uh, you can get it. You just order the dash kit, the wiring harness, the unit. And then I retained the factory amplifier. I used a small boss amp behind the head unit here. And I may be doing another video in the future on how I did that, even though I do not recommend the amplifier because it had a lot of problems. But it is possible to use an aftermarket stereo and retain the factory subwoofer. And you can get better sound out of it by adding an aftermarket smaller amp. After I had the Sony installed, I decided it just wasn't enough. Uh, it, the sound quality was decent, uh, but the Sony interface was very, very plain. Some people like that. And it also had problems intermittently connecting with Android Auto to my uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And I had no problems on any other uh, vehicles that I have with that. I narrowed it down to uh, the firmware on the Sony. And uh, that was even with the latest firmware. So it had to get out. So I decided I wanted to take it up a notch. And that's where I decided I was going to do something a little more custom. So I bought this 8-inch joying navigation system and it's an android based system and if you've seen some of my other videos in the past i have really good luck with join products they seem to be like the higher end when it comes to quality as far as some of the android stereos are concerned and you are going to pay a little bit more money for their products but it really is worth it also once you go to something a little more advanced and customizable like an android stereo it's kind of hard to step back into just a plain Jane, you know, Pioneer or Sony system, especially the Sony. I mean, you couldn't even change the wallpaper on that. So it got to the point where it just wasn't good enough for me. So I needed something a little bit better. So the, the purpose of this video is going to be, I'm going to show you how I installed uh, this custom uh, join double din setup in this vehicle. And then in another video, I will have uh, the backup camera installation. I also added a backup camera, which I'll just show you real quick. And um, that will be completely in another video how I did that. All right, so here on the inside, um, to get the panel off, it goes around the whole dash. There's no actual screws that hold on, it's just clipped on. So you start over on this side over here, and if you feel there's like a little tab, you just get like a pry tool something like this, or a butter knife, or something, whatever, and start working it loose. And there's a bunch of harnesses that you just need to disconnect all over there. And you'll have to put it in the lowest position and drop the wheel, put, put it in gears, put the um, emergency brake on. If you pop out this little cover right here, you can take your key and just stick it down. This is your emergency release to allow you to engage your shifter. So stick a key down there, pull it down into gear, and it's very easy to get the dashboard off. That leaves us with this situation here. So to get the actual radio itself out, there's one, two, three, four, and then a fifth screw down on the bottom piece here. These are eight millimeter. Take these out, make sure you don't lose them. And that 
is all that holds stock radio in place. Depending on your model, there'll be a bunch of connections behind here. So go ahead and unclip all of these and then your radio is out of the way. All right, so the next thing to prepare for the radio installation is I'm gonna be installing this little US remote USB port. I'm gonna put it somewhere where it's convenient. So I thought about putting it in the little cubby that's below here, but I'm gonna think I'm gonna put it right here because then I can put my phone down here, up here, or over here, portably down out of the way. And that looks like a good spot to me for it. So I'm just gonna take this little step bit. I believe it's a three quarter inch hole I need. I'm just gonna put it right in the middle here. So you can actually reach down here and grab it, which is nice. You don't have to take anything off, as long as I got the hole big enough. All right. So definitely wanna, don't wanna go too big, start too small, because you can't go backwards. All right, so when it comes time to do the wiring for your aftermarket stereo and the installation kit, the most common way to do it is to use what's called a a uh, double den installation kit, and I prefer the Metra uh, family of products when I do wiring. So the easiest way I think that's gonna be to do this uh, is what I'm gonna show you here. So I have here a wiring diagram. This is for the factory radio connection in a 2009 and up bridge line. So in 2009, a lot of stuff changed. The six through eights were one way and 2009 through 14s were another. So in this case, I'm focusing on that. And this is the wiring diagram for that. If you have a 2006 to eight ridge line, you will need to find a wiring diagram for that because there will be some differences. You will not be using the same harness. I also want to utilize the factory steering wheel controls. Well, even though, you know, this is a 2010 and it has a CAN bus system, the steering wheel controls are still old fashioned style steering wheel controls. So that's why I bought two of these Metro harnesses and I'll show you why. What I'm going to be doing uh, to avoid cutting a few wires at least, these are cheap, is I'm gonna use one of them and I'll wire it up color for color to the aftermarket radio that I'm installing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a couple wires out of here. I'm gonna depin this and I'm gonna just use these wires and install them in here. And the position that I wanna use is, so if we look at our connector right here, what I'm concerned about with this harness is my steering wheel controls. So there's two wires we need. Right here, number 16, which is this position right here. If you look in here, in that position, it is blank. It's this bottom row, there's two pins that are missing, 15 and 16. So 15 is nothing, 16 is our audio remote switch. And that is basically the output of our steering wheel controls. The other thing related to steering controls is this right over here, number five, audio remote switch ground, which right here, number five. All we need to do is ground that, but we still need to add another pin into here so we can do that. So I will take another wire, probably just the small, I don't know, you can just pick one. I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape and write it on there. Just pick any one of these smaller wires, take it out of there, and I will stick it in position number five, which you look along the top row, there's a bunch missing. I will push that wire into there and that will give me my outputs. So when I go to wire this up to the new stereo, you would either use those, uh, wires to connect to your uh, steering wheel control interface, or in my case, since I'm using the Sony stereo, you do not need a steering wheel control interface. It's programmable. So all I will need to do is connect those two wires to the uh, Sony harness, and then I can program it all after it's all installed. You have an antenna adapter here. That's self-explanatory though. That just gets connected to your, your remote switch from the stereo, and that plugs into the stereo. This plugs into the factory wiring. That's easy. So I'm working on depinning this now. You can see you're going to destroy it. I already got one out and put it 
This is gonna be my steering wheel control ground, pin five there. So the basic way to go about this is, uh, you know, in theory, you'd be able to, there's a little metal clip that retains these wires. And if you take something skinny enough and get it up in there just right, you will release that clip and pull it out. But when they're this small, uh, it can be hard to uh, get something small enough that's rigid enough to get in there. So basically what I'm doing is I have to kind of like destroy um, destroy the pin area. So I'll just take this. I know that the little clip is on the top of this wire here. Now once I get the wire pulled out a little bit, I'm going to try to just pull that through there. Let's see, I kind of messed the retainer up a little bit. Let's try to just be real careful with this stuff, bend it back into place here. Okay, so now we want to take a good harness. So we already did pin number five, which is our remote switch ground. Now we want pin number 16. So if we count over, so 13, 14, which is this one, 15, 16. So you'll see there's two empty slots. We want the furthest one over. Stick this in the correct direction. All right, we can see it down in there. Kind of help it along. Let's see if I can grab it and pull it up into place. All right, so I've got it pulled up into place there. Again, I'm sorry for the light in here. But okay, so this gray wire, so we don't want to get it confused with the other two. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a piece of tape on it that says steering wheel control one or positive, however you want to label it. We just have two wires in the Honda system, a ground and then our output. So that's how we do this. So. You might think, man, that's a lot of work. I could just cut into the factory wires. Yeah, you could just cut into the factory wires just as easy, but this is a little bit cleaner. And like I said, these are only a couple bucks. So I spent a couple dollars just to get these two little wires. Then you hold on to this and you never know when you might need a connector like this or some of these extra pins. So we'll hold on to that. All right, so as far as the factory setup goes, I seem to take this bottom piece off. So I can install it onto the new dash kit. And so we've got this off. I can set this whole thing aside. <clears throat> Alright, so this part's a little confusing. But this piece right here has a little L on it, which is left if you're looking at the front. So you take it like this, and then you slide this on here like that and then fits in this little groove and then you use a carriage bolt to secure that side and on this side the right side if you take it like this you see that's what we want to slide over so slide that over there and then we're going to bring it down here and it's going to slip down in a little thing there as you can see so we can put the bolt holes in or the nut and the bolt through there. Now be careful, this will scratch easily. So if you're, or, and this is the surface you're gonna see, so always keep it on something kind of soft. All right, so after you get everything bolted together, now we're gonna reattach the, the bottom part that we took off. It's pretty easy, you just gotta get the brackets lined up. There's these little tabs that fit. This is all a little chintzy, it's plastic, but you can feel that once it snaps together, it does feel a little more substantial. And we'll just put in the same screws that we took out. Different. So this is more of a tablet style uh, interface. It will not fit this hole. So I'm gonna try to come up with some kind of custom mounting solution that will look good. And other people have tried similar uh, projects. I got one that's just barely bigger than this opening so it should look good 
and once it's back installed with the dash on, we'll see how it looks. But there might be a little bit of uh, rigging that has to take place to get it to look just right. Amazing. So this is the wiring harness that comes with it. And I kind of already got it put together with a new Honda harness. I already ran my wires for steering wheel control um, for the new stereo to the Honda wires. The only thing I have to hook up is this is going to be um, for the powered antenna connection that the Honda requires. And this will obviously my backup camera connections and stuff like that once I get inside the vehicle itself. Let's open this box. This is the main piece here. And a lot of these stereos have the same uh, motherboard, you want to call it, or processor unit, the doubled in part, and then they just have different size screens that you can get. In my case, this is considered an 8 inch screen. Okay. So, this is kind of the look, the finished look we're going for. Flush against here as close as possible. You don't want a bunch of gaps. If there's a tiny bit of a gap, you're not going to see it. But we want it to look like this. So I don't even know if that's possible to get the radio mounted in there correctly yet. So that's what I mean. There might be a little bit of customization involved. You could go bigger, but then you have a problem with attaching the screen and then putting the dashboard back on if it's larger than this opening here. All right, so this is the actual unit itself. It's got a ribbon cable that connects to the screen. This is just standard double din. In the back here, you can see it's got these adjustable mounts that you can move all over to get the screen centered where you want. But the problem is with the ridge line here, uh, it's not straight. So it's kind of at an angle. As you can see, the factory system. So this is what's going to make it a little tricky. If it was just straight up and down, it would make this process easier because we could just push the doubled in part through to where we need it to be. So this is probably going to take a little bit of customizing. All right, so here's what we had to modify. So I've got on the sides, put this in the lowest position up here, and I had to drill out and extend this mount here, same thing on this side. I had to extend this one and I put this in the lowest position. And the reason for that is we tilted the screen so that it was angled, the radio was angled back to try to match the pitch of how the factory radio was. Then I had to enlarge this opening. And the reason I enlarged the opening was it allows this protruding edge to sit back inside. And that allows us to get as close as possible. So I, I did not move these at all from where they were in the stock location. So once I put this cable in, I'm gonna snap this in here and show you where we're at. Get the cable plugged in. Push these in. All right, so there's where we are at. So you can see just the smallest gap on the sides. There's like no gap on the bottom, no gap. Uh, I don't really like how it's sitting, so I might just put a couple little. Uh, drill just a couple tiny little holes in the plastic put a couple set screws to kind of keep this from popping out like that okay so what i did is i took a little 1 8 inch drill bit and drilled a couple of holes while holding this in place put a couple of screws in so now this isn't going anywhere it's nice and securely mounted now it's just a matter 
doing our regular wiring. So just matching your colors up and getting everything plugged in. On the back, the join radio. The reason I like this brand so much, obviously it has built-in CarPlay and Android Auto, um, but we have all of our in and output ports. Uh, it's got a built-in 4G modem, which does not really have the best band coverage for the United States. I mean, it will work if you're in a metropolitan, but most people will just use a Wi-Fi hotspot of some sort. Um, but it's got your digital audio out. So you have a optical port here and a coaxial port here. So if you're into, if you're an autophile and you want to use external amps, you can have a digital connection versus an analog connection to your amplifiers. But the, amp, the built in amplifier is pretty good for most of us normal people. Uh, they have come a really long way with the sound quality on these units. All right, so got everything test fit and I think it's gonna work great. When it comes time to actually make wiring connections, as I pointed out, you receive this harness and all the standard colors apply. Also included with the unit is two 4G antennas. And for best performance, you'd wanna mount those up in the windshield. Also included is a GPS antenna, which we'll mount up under the dash. Uh, you do not have to mount this on top of the car or on top of the dash. As long as it's under plastic only and under metal, it can be up in here. So we'll find a good spot under the dash to put that. Some people do run it out and put it right here because it's kind of a good spot for it. There's also a couple USB extension cables, a external microphone, which we will probably not be using. Um, if you want to use it, I would suggest putting it somewhere up here in the headliner. Kind of like this one I have installed here. And then you have to decide um, what connections you want to retain. Um, the only thing I'm going to be tapping into in this harness with this installation, because I'm going to be installing an aftermarket uh, bazooka subwoofer in the back, is this auxiliary port. Uh, I don't really ever have a use for an auxiliary port, but the fact that the car has it here, it won't take me very long, so I want to retain it. So uh, the easiest way to do that, um, the wires to retain it are all right here. The only wires that we need to worry about is the brown wire, which is right here. That is our right channel positive. Our left channel positive is the white wire, and the blue wire is our auxiliary ground wire. So basically all I'm gonna do is I got a spare RCA cable. I'm gonna cut the wires back a little bit, uh, wire both the grounds together, connected to the blue wire, and then wire my brown and my white to the tips of these for each channel. The white one will be the left channel, the red one will be the right channel, and then we can plug them into our auxiliary in on the back of the stereo, and then we will have the ability to retain the auxiliary port, even though I'll probably never use it. I still wanna keep it. All right, so here's the finished product for our auxiliary ports. Uh, I got this 10 foot cable here. Uh, it's a RCA coaxial cable. The subwoofer is a mono output on the back of this stereo unit. So um, if you don't have a mono input on your amp, then you can just get a splitter like this to split it off. But I will run that and the power wires, uh, you know, to the back of the car when I get to that point. Um, just getting everything in the dash done. So all I have to do is go ahead and hook everything up. GPS antenna. Got my other USB cable run over here into the glove box. I've got everything over here where I can get be able to get it down to the side. I'm just getting everything behind the dash done. That way I can put this button this all back together here and do a little testing real quick, make sure we're good to go. So I've got my GPS antenna connected. Like I said, I've got my regular antenna connected. I'm not going to be using the 4G capabilities of the stereo because it doesn't cover all the bands and I just, I won't use that anyway. I'll usually be using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. 
And if I do need to go in here, I have the Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone that I will use for the Wi-Fi on the radio. Besides that, that's all of my connections. Everything else is ready to go. Get everything plugged in and get everything put up in the dash. All right, so don't forget to connect your wire and harness to your passenger airbag and hazard switch. Because you'll have an airbag light if you do that. We'll get all our screws put back in here. Now's the time to check stuff. Make sure everything's working. Maybe, maybe we can let that one. Alright. We've got sound to start. I'm just gonna check our make sure we have a USB connection. Carlink app and give it a second. All right, so we are connected to Android Auto, which is good. You can see. So we know our USB port's working. Go ahead and pair my phone just to make sure. I went ahead and wired in the external mic. It does have a built-in mic that I've found that works really good. I'm going to try the external mic just because I've never used it before. So what I'll do, let's see, my Bluetooth. Go ahead and get on our phone, connect Bluetooth. Need a password, zero, 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 zero. All right, so this is connected, Galaxy Note 9. All right, we made our test call, and that's working good. So I think we're okay there. Last thing I need to check that we just wired up is our auxiliary port. And once I know that that's working, well, actually, we'll check our GPS, too. Right here, here, GPS. All right, so GPS status. Located successfully. It gives you your signal strength over here. GLONASS GPS is pretty neat. I'm sitting in my garage. And it's connected to GPS, so that works good. So we know we've got a good GPS signal. Uh, so the last thing we try is the auxiliary port here. All right, so you can hear it works. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the dashboard back together. And it's just the reverse removal. The key is, I'm going to go ahead and make sure you put your shifter all the way down. So make sure your emergency brakes on, stick this in here, pull that down, and then make sure you get all your connections. Don't forget to connect anything. There's a lot of little connections back here. Again, make sure you remember to plug this one in before you put it back in. All right, so now we're moving on to the subwoofer portion of the installation. So you start by putting your seats in the upright position. Then all along the bottom, there's plastic trim pieces that come off and you just pry them off carefully. All right, you'll see there are bolts, four of them here, that bolt this plate down in the seat, bottoms of the seat belts. And there's some bolts over on that side and there'll be a couple more on this side. And once we get all those out, we should be able to just lift the seat up and out of the way. And then we're going to be, the factory subwoofer is behind on the passenger side over here. But I'm just gonna leave that in place and we're gonna be placing the new subwoofer over on the driver's side behind the seat. All right, so once you get the bolts, the larger bolts taken out down here, um, then this one seat belt bolt that runs down through. Then these little plastic pieces right here pry up and you'll see there's like these little metal clips Long story short, you just lift the seat up. It helps to have two people pry up on the seat and pull it forward and it will come out. So here's the factory subwoofer. 
What's just going on with that? The one we're putting in is going to go right here. I don't know if I have to remove the factory on. I don't think so. I think it'll fit right here. We will have to remove most of this sound deadening material right here down at the bottom edge. That way there's enough room for it to get back in there. And then it's just compressed into this space right here. And I'm going to run all my wires over, then up to the head unit. Alrighty, so here's the subwoofer I'm using. This is a 6 inch bazooka, 100 watt amplified tube. This is one that is known to fit in that location. And then it comes with a wiring harness. This is your level control. This is for a remote, a plug-in remote. It's all covered in the instructions. Uh, it comes with this short harness here. Now, they used to come with longer harnesses. So see, you get this short little harness here. So you basically just have to run a wiring back to the sub. All right, so I'm making modifications to try to fit this factory subwoofer in here. So I'm gonna have to cut a lot of this insulation off. basically doing we're basically just gonna kind of smash this right here and when we put the seats back on it will kind of pin it in place all right so my wires come behind the glove box they come down pull up the trim here on the sides they run through here use the coat hanger to snake it through here and they come out here again fish them through here. That's where my wires come out here. I have a two into one splitter right here. I'm using nice thick shielded cables so we don't get any in the ways on our subwoofer. I've got this cable here. It has, it's a two conductor. I was able to then splice everything into here. So I'll plug that in. I've got this ground wire right here. There is a nice body ground. You can see right up in the top right hand side of the screen there. Take that 10 millimeter bolt out. I'll hook that ground there, plug in the subwoofer, and then I am ready to at least try it before I put everything back together. Because once you get the seat back in, there's no adjusting the subwoofer. So you want to make sure you have it turned up pretty loud, and then we can always turn it down from the head unit. All right, so what's neat about this head unit is, I don't know if you can see it, but I can actually turn, you probably can't see the light, but you can turn the amplifier on and off from the head unit itself. All right, so there's no way I'm gonna be able to show you how it sounds, but you have to take my word for it that for a little tiny six inch subwoofer, it sounds pretty good. So I just put on this little bass test It sounds really good. So how we tune our subwoofer. Sound. Subwoofer. And I have mine set up so the low pass is all the way down. So it's got the full range and it's all the way up to 200. I've got it at 5. And you can obviously turn the volume up and down the subwoofer. I've got it up all the way in the back. Alright, let's go ahead and turn the key forward. You can see... Everything fits perfectly around the frame. And I just used standard Metra dash kit, aftermarket dash kit, and made some pretty serious modifications to it to make this fit correctly. Behind this seat is where I installed the subwoofer. It's a little dirty in here right now, but if you want to retain all this nice space under your seats, um, you can get an amplified bazooka sub behind the seats. The problem is finding the six inch amplified bazooka subwoofer right now is kind of difficult. You can get them uh, like new open box from the manufacturer on eBay. And I'll put a link where I got mine 
in case you're interested in doing the same thing. Same thing with this head unit. I'll leave a link for this in the description also. So if you, ha if you have any experience with Android uh, head units, you understand how they work. They've come a long way over the years. This one from Joing has um, digital audio output. Uh, if you're into the more high-end audio file and you want to have an external amplifier, uh, in my case, I just used the subwoofer output on the back of the stereo to install the sub, and um, I'm using the built-in digital signal processor and amplifiers for the rest of the speakers. Obviously, it has a radio, just like any vehicle sound system. Uh, the combination of this new radio and the bazooka subwoofer is a night and day difference over the factory sound system. Obviously, a little section subwoofer is not going to rattle the windows or no one outside the car is going to know what's going on. But I'm telling you, inside the vehicle, it has all the bass you could need. I was also able to install just some regular old apps like uh, an an offline navigation app and uh, you can install Pandora and Waze and stuff like that directly on the stereo. That way if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, um, you can utilize the Wi-Fi hotspot and use just the apps without your phone on the stereo. One of the nicest features I think is the equalizer on this unit and how customizable it is. Uh, you have uh, virtual surround settings, bass enhancement, you can change your sound field, which is just basically your fade. Uh, bass filters, this is your cutoff. You can select your front or rear speakers. So on the front, I've got the lowest bass cutoff. That way, um, it lets the subwoofer handle it and it keeps the, uh, the front factory speakers running a lot cleaner. It makes the uh, tweeters that are up in the dash sound actually pretty good, considering they're just a factory speaker. If I had one complaint about this stereo, it's that these capacitive buttons are a little annoying. There's sometimes, you know, you have to hit them just right. As you can see, or press and hold for the volume to work. You can retrain them, which sometimes helps a little bit. Um, but the stock steering wheel controls work perfectly. All right, obviously we can play Bluetooth directly from the uh, phone. You can make and receive your phone calls. I installed a microphone up here on the headliner. This does have a built-in microphone though. You don't have to put an external mic if you don't want and the built-in one actually works pretty good. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, uh, you can play videos. If you have any installed, put it in a thumb drive for the video. Obviously, driver cannot be watching videos, but any of your passengers, it's a nice big screen. Um, we have just a regular music player. So all of your internal music, and, you know, you can download any music player you want from the app store. This is Android after all. Therefore you have all your apps like Chrome, uh, Mac, Google Maps, uh, Play Store. So you can download anything you can imagine. So I'm not really gonna cover all the features of an Android stereo. You kind of get the idea. This is a very good system and you will be pleasantly surprised by how well it sounds. There's a lot of other people out there who have installed a nine inch unit in their ridge lines. I've seen on some of the forums and they did not use a dash kit and it basically takes up more of this area. But to me, it actually looks like garbage because you've got it sticking out up here and then it recessed down here and then you can see a line around it. That looks like garbage to me. So I wanted something that looked a little bit better than that. As you can see, everything sits flush the way it should. This looks like it's meant to be here. It looks factory, it looks OEM, except for the fact that this is join on it. And that's the way it should be. So I just wanted to cover this. Hopefully the video is helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. I will leave links to all the products that I use in this video below in case you want to do the same thing on your ridge line. And be sure to like the video and subscribe for more. And until next time, we'll see you later.